I dropped it. Yes, on the way I dropped it. A little girl, picked it up, put it in cheddar pop. Was rocking on down the avenue. Not a single thing to do. Was heck, 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 and all of that. When she spied it on the ground, she took it, she took it. My little yellow basket. And if she doesn't bring it back, I think that I will cry. Hello and welcome to my very first in progress review. This one's going to be for the Hawker Hurricane Mark 1 from Airfix in 124 scale. In these reviews I hope to give you obviously a bit of an idea of how I'm going with the actual uh, assembly of the model but also to talk about things that might uh, might discover along the way, perhaps some good features of the kit or things that didn't go together quite as well as I'd hoped and also just talk about um, some of the research I might have done, choice of colours I've made, um, even about some of the paints and things that I've used. Hopefully things that might be of interest to you. But I'd, as always, I would really welcome your comments, so feel free to pop a comment below this video if you like and tell me what you think is good and bad about the progress reports and what you'd like to see. So with all that said and done, let's talk about the kit. Like a lot of modelers, I don't tend to follow the instructions to the letter, so Generally I'll skip around depending on what needs to be glued and painted and what I'm waiting to be finished and so on. Um, having said that, I pretty much did do the first three sequences, steps one, two and three, straight out of the box if you like. And they're all to do with the assembly of the Rolls-Royce Merlin engine. So let's have a look at what we've got so far with that. And here it is. And I'd have to say, it uh, went together pretty well. There was no major challenges with it. Uh, there was a bit of flash and a bit of cleanup required, which I already identified was going to be an issue with this kit. But it was also the beginning of an interesting quest, which was to try and find out what are the correct colours to paint your Hawker Hurricane in. And that seems like a very easy uh, request, but in fact, I think it's rather complicated. There are a lot of photographs and details about the Hawker Hurricane on the internet, for example, but there's also a lot of inconsistency about the choice of colours, and straight off the bat I struck this with the engine. For example, if I looked at a lot of the uh, Warbirds that are out there now, these are the ones that have been restored, they have a lot more colourful looking engines than I've got, so some of the details have been picked out and painted like the Rolls-Royce uh, logo on the valve covers, and perhaps they use polished bolts and all sorts of interesting things. But it struck me that those are the sort of things that wouldn't be done in wartime production. When really Rolls-Royce was flat out making these engines both for the Hurricane, the Spitfire, and also for the RAF's bombers. So I did a little bit more research and uh, the two key sources I sort of came down to was a film that was produced about the manufacturing of the Hawker Hurricane uh, in the UK. And also, although it was a later model, a Hawker Hurricane Mark II that had been uh, retrieved from a lake in Russia. So it had been a wartime hurricane that had been given to the Russians on lend lease and had just literally been dragged out. And all the uh, woodwork obviously was gone, but the metalwork and the aircraft was still in remarkably good condition. So the photographs were taken of that as soon as it was taken out of the lake, obviously were of that aircraft as it looked in uh, wartime service. The other source I used to some extent was also uh, some photographs that were taken for publicity purposes of a Hawker Hurricane that was given to the Finnish Air Force. So I put those all together and then I obviously had to make a few assumptions. The first one was, being a wartime aircraft, it's going to be painted as simple as possible. Um, so what I discovered was, basically the engines were just black, which kind of makes sense. They're not meant to be pretty, they're meant to be functional. Uh, but in a scale model, if I just paint that black, it's going to look a little bit uh, dull and uninteresting. So I did try to add a little bit of 3D dimension and depth to it by my choice of paints. So the overall uh, colour I chose was uh, not black, but in fact tyre black, which is a very dark grey from uh, Mr. Hobby Colour. It's H77. And once I had that in place, I then darkened it a little bit with just some of the same brand, Mr. Hobby Flat Black. And I used that and sprayed that heavily diluted into the, some of the darker recesses of the engine. 
to try and give a little bit more of a 3D look to it. That worked pretty well, and then I ended up with a, a nice looking engine, but a very uh, matte finished engine. And it occurred to me that given the type of paint that would have been used at the time, which would certainly almost have been enamel, um, and it would have had to have been heat resistant paint at that, that all the examples of heat resistant paint I've seen over the years typically have had a semi-gloss to gloss finish on them. And there were hints in the film from the factory that that indeed was the actual colour. I also think a little bit of a gloss makes the engine look more metallic uh, and less plastic as well. So I decided at that point to give the entire model a clear coat of uh, Alclad 2 clear coat semi matte. This is the, I guess, the one lacquer above the flat base lacquer that they make as well. And it just gives a slight sheen to everything that I thought looked a little bit better. I also went ahead and then highlighted some of the metalwork to just try and give a representation of a little bit of wear and also to just add a little bit more 3D depth and variation to it. So I ended up using the Tamiya Weathering Master system, which are absolutely fantastic. And these work very well on a gloss or semi-gloss finish as well, much better than they do on the matte. So that was another reason for looking to put the Alcad lacquer on it as well. And I basically went over some of the areas with a little bit of uh, gun metal, a little bit of silver, and even a little bit of soot, just to try and give it a colour variation. At that point it came to the actual engine mounts, and they were interesting too, because with my research I found out that either they looked just silver, that they are in fact um, painted. They're not natural metal finish. They've got like an aluminium sort of dope colour to them. And this is basically the same colour that uh, Hawker used in their biplane era aircraft. So I had a look through my acrylic paints and really couldn't find anything that I thought would be suitable. So I went back to my stash of enamel paints. And for the first, and certainly not the last time, I started adding some enamel paints to this particular build. So the colour I chose was a very old one from Humbrol, which is HB14 Airframe Silver. I don't think even Humble makes this anymore. This, this paint would probably have to be 25 to 30 years old, to be honest. But it's a credit to the manufacturer that uh, once I, I um, opened it up and stirred it up thoroughly, it works absolutely fine. So I thinned that down and sprayed it and struck another problem, which is probably after years and years and years of wishing I could get a bright silver chrome finish and never really been able to pull it off with an airbrush, of course, this paint came out with a lovely bright silver chrome looking finish, which most times would have left me overjoyed, but in this case, when I was going for more of a dull aluminium colour, was obviously not going to work. So for the engine, I actually decided to use a little bit of silver again from the Tamiya Weathering Master system, just to sort of dull it down a little bit. But uh, I'm not completely happy with that, so I've actually changed how I've done that for the cockpit, which I'll talk about in a minute. Normally when I'm doing the front propeller and spinners, I normally just put the propeller blades on as a last step in the kit. But as you'll see in a little bit, uh, the front of this model is fairly fragile because a lot of the panels are designed to be removed so you can see the engine detail. And I was a little bit concerned that if I put the blades on later, that just the pressure I need to actually get them in place might actually crack some of the seams and otherwise ruin the model. So I've made a decision in this particular instance to actually go ahead and put the propeller blades and the spinner on as part of the construction at the beginning. For the red on the nose itself, um, I did look at using a gloss red, but really the colour just didn't look quite look right. So again, having a bit of a rummage around the paint collection, I ended up with yet another old tin of Humbrol paint, this one being Humbrol's Matte 60, which is a matte red. And I popped that onto the spinner and was very happy with the finish. But again, it was a, um, a gloss finish. So I went over again with the clear coat semi-matte. For the propeller blades, I used uh, a white primer. So I used MIG's white primer and uh, painted that first. Then I used some of Model Air's gold yellow for the yellow tips. And then masked those off and followed up with... Um, Mr. Hobby flat black for the blades themselves. The exhaust stacks were an interesting uh, little research project in, them, in and of themselves. Uh, quite often we just go ahead and whack a bit of weathering on there and hope for the best, but I thought since I've been doing a lot of research looking at the actual engines to try and get an idea of the colours, I'd go and have a look 
at the exhaust stacks. And this is where I think the modern day warbirds, the restored hurricanes and things like that, are really, really useful. Because although those aircraft are kept in immaculate condition, of course the exhaust stains on the actual stacks themselves are going to be fairly much what you would have seen in a wartime aircraft, since you know, there's not much we can do about hiding that. And what I discovered was that in fact that the exhaust stacks were different colours. Um, typically it seemed the centre stack on both sides, on both banks of the engine, seemed to run the hottest. So it had more of a sort of a rusty, brighter, brighter orange sort of colour to it. Whereas the front and rear stacks uh, seemed to get less heat generated to them, which I guess makes sense since they're on the outer edges of the engine. The front stack seemed to be the coolest, and the rear stack was the next coolest, and of course the centre stack was the hottest. So I've tried to weather the stacks on my Hurricane engine a little bit to represent that. I might go back and do a little bit more touch-up on that. But generally I'm pretty happy with those. They were painted just in a MIG... Um, black primer and then which gives it like a semi matte finish anyway and or semi gloss I should say and then I went over those with some Tamiya weathering powder to rust then I added some uh, soot from the same set and then finally finished off with a little bit of orange rust for the highlights on the stacks to indicate the variation uh, in the discoloration of them Overall, the engine went together very well. Uh, it's quite nicely detailed, particularly for a kid of this age, and I do particularly like the fact that you've even got the Rolls-Royce uh, branding there on the rocker covers, which is something you don't see anymore, unfortunately, since manufacturers have decided they can make a dollar out of model kit uh, manufacturers by charging them royalties for things like that. So obviously, Airfix must have had a deal that uh, allowed them to continue to keep that on the model, and I think it looks a lot better for it. So overall, pretty positive experience with the engine. Next I decided to tackle let's move those paints out of the way. Next I decided to tackle the actual fuselage itself. And this is where I found one of the problems with this kit. The idea behind the front of the aircraft obviously is you can have removable panels so you can see the detail that's actually inside the kit, which is a great idea. Uh, and what I started to do was using a little pin vise was I started to drill out some of the holes. I don't know if you can see those. But I've started to drill out some of the holes, which is where those panels would have been basically clipped onto the aircraft when it was in flight. And uh, that's where I struck the first problem. On this side of the kit, which you can see here, the mould's pretty sharp. Okay, I had to do a bit of sanding and things like that. There you go. So I had to uh, do a bit of cleaning up across all of it, but that's been fairly atypical of this whole kit and drill some holes and I was fairly happy with that. Unfortunately when I went to do the other side what I discovered was that this side the mould was quite old and worn and as a result a lot of the uh, actual finish on this was not very good. In fact it was bad enough that I really felt that I couldn't leave the side panels on this side open unless I was going to go ahead and do some scratch building. The other problem with this side of the kit was that the nose was heavily warped and so as a result it was pointing up at quite an angle and so I made a decision that I would glue some of the panels in just basically to try and pull the nose down again to where it should be and obviously to hide some of the uh, problems with the mould itself. This is a very good indication to be quite honest that um, really this kit's getting a bit too old and it's time for Airfix to think about either phasing it out or ideally <coughs> pardon me, to talk about phasing it out or ideally uh, for them to look at building a new mould for the Hurricane. Awesome. While I was working on the engine I also made a start on the cockpit and uh, one of the first parts was this tank which is painted in this rather interesting red. Now I, I did quite a bit of research on this and uh, I noticed the colour was definitely not a, a normal red if you like, it, it was more of a brick red. So I started looking around and trying to find some resources on it. The photographs of the Finnish Hurricane actually had this colour on the tank as well as on the uh, fuel tanks in the wings and uh, I'm not sure what this is but I, I do have a clue in that I was looking at a blog of a hurricane that was being restored and they had some bump stops that fit in the undercarriage bay basically to stop the undercarriage from folding too far into the wing 
and they look to be made of uh, some sort of a rubber and they were the same colour as this. So I'm guessing this is some kind of rubber coating. But perhaps someone that knows more about hurricanes than me could answer that question. To get the colour, I used, again, Humbrol's Matte 60 Red and then just added a little bit of Humbrol number 72, which is like a brown tan, until I'd actually toned the red down a little bit to that colour. And I think I've got it fairly close to what I could see in the photographs. For the cockpit itself, it's a fairly straightforward assembly, but again, lots of work in cleaning up parts, and that's probably the one really annoying feature about this kit, is you're constantly having to file all sorts of seams and things. And again, looking at the colour scheme, this is another one that's a little bit challenging, because there are so many variations of colours that you find inside the Hurricane. Now, I'm not sure if that's to do with perhaps the Canadian-built Hurricanes were painted differently to the UK ones, or whether it's just a byproduct of restorations over the years. Um, you can't even really rely on museum aircraft because quite often those aircraft have also been repainted at some point in their life to stop uh, things like rust. So I think as far as I can tell, the frame itself was painted in this silver dope finish. And so that's what I've elected to do. Uh, I did use again the uh, Humbrol HB14 airframe silver and once again found it to be way too glossy. So I've actually sprayed over the top of that with some of the Alclad 2 lacquer clear coat semi matte which has given it a nice sort of dulled finish which I think looks a lot closer to what I could find in the photographs. I didn't add any detailing to this part, it didn't really need any. Um, I've just added perhaps a, a little compass down on the floor there. Uh, but generally speaking it went together okay. It kind of looks like a hurricane cockpit I guess. If you actually look at um, photographs you'll find it's not quite right and again I think that's a little bit of a common theme with this kit. Everything's sort of approximately what a hurricane should be but it's not exactly right. So if you're someone that um, gets really bugged by kits that don't do a good job of reproducing the detail, uh, you're probably going to be doing a lot of scratch building I suspect if you buy this kit. The other part that was interesting was the actual floor, or what is a floor, which is where the pilot would rest their feet and use the rudder controls. I found that painted different colours. I've seen it in the RAF uh, interior grey-green. I've seen it in the silver dope. And I've seen others where it looks to be a slightly darker colour. So I compromised and decided to do it in a just a, um, a wash, basically, out of the top of the silver dope. To sort of represent perhaps it's a different colour or perhaps it's just got a little bit of wear and tear. And since it's in the lower part of the cockpit I figured I'd get away with that. But I also sprayed silver, the airframe silver, on the aircraft gun bays and you can see the effect there and I've already um, coated those with the Alclad 2 lacquer. And I think it came up pretty well. I wanted the gun bay to look like it was actually being used so I did want it to look a bit grimy but I didn't want it to look like it had been through World War Three or something. So basically I added a little bit of muck and dirt to it and left it at that. My research seems to indicate that the Browning machine guns were a very dark metallic finish to them, almost a black. So I've attempted to uh, get that effect by using uh, just basically some Tamiya acrylic paint. So the one I used as a base was acrylic, uh, was metal grey XF56. And then I went over that with some dark gun metal from the Tamiya Weathering Master System. And that gave me a fairly close colour. And then I went over that again with some Citadel Nulon Oil. Citadel's the uh, paints and things that are used by people doing the war gaming. And they make some quite good colours for model makers in general. So I put that over there and that just went into the dark recesses like a wash basically. And then finally I finished off with a bit of um, Alclad 2 Clear Coat Semi Matte again. Because being guns, they're going to have oil on them, and they're metal finish, so I didn't want them to be completely matte. The final bit I've been working on is the actual cockpit panel, instrument panel. So this was a chance to use the air scale instrument panel decal, which I think came up pretty well. It's a little bit disappointing that it's not colour, because there is actually a little bit of colour on some of the uh, instruments in the Hurricanes instrument panel, but overall I think the effect's quite good. Basically just sanded the rear of the instrument panel piece that comes with the kit to thin it down a little bit and then cut out with some thin plastic card a new back 
and also with the clear piece that comes with the airscale panel decal they give you a clear piece of plastic I cut that to size as well and then just um, basically applied the decal to my new backing put the clear and then glued the whole lot and sandwiched it together behind the instrument panel and I think the effect looks pretty good uh, the actual instrument panel itself again like other parts of the kit uh, doesn't quite look like the right thing it's sort of there so overall it's not too bad but there is some detail missing that in a modern kit in 124 scale you would probably expect to find so I just basically went over the instrument panel with a couple of different colors basically where they should be just to add a little bit of um, variety to the panel and I think it should look fine once it's actually in the model Two, one. the last part I've been working on is the landing gear bay and I had a couple issues with this when it came to the assembly the first one which is fairly obvious when you look at the parts is there are some quite prominent ejection pin markings and for reasons best known to Airfix they've actually got the ejection pin markings on the detail side of the parts the side that you're going to see inside the actual bay so I had to go ahead and fill those and sand those first the other problem I had was the actual main part of the and the carriage bay was heavily warped in my particular kit uh, fortunately I was able to straighten it out by just gluing the other assemblies, the back and front panels basically and using a bit of Tamiya extra thin, extra thin cement which dries quite quickly and that seemed to be good enough to straighten it all out and make it usable again once I had all the parts in place the actual reservoir that sits in the middle looks nice but also looks a bit odd because there's nothing connected to it on the other side so I went ahead and got some fuse wire and just made some attachments either side now I know these are completely inaccurate and they're not going to the right places and all the rest of it but I just wanted to give it at least some little bit of detail there because it just looked a bit odd sitting there on its own with nothing connected either end of it otherwise it's detailed fairly well and I think it should look good once we've got the actual undercarriage in place so that's where we're up to with the Hawker Hurricane build it's been pretty good so far uh, I think my main complaint has really just been about the age of the kit I've been spending a lot of time sanding various bits and pieces. It's a bit tedious at times, to be honest. And also dealing with some of the fit issues, which are a direct result of just the moulds being old. But we're making progress, and I'm feeling pretty confident this one will come together and look a half-decent kit when we're done. So I'll see you on the next progress report. Thanks for watching.